Hey, hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to host self-hosted GitHub Actions runner on Amazon EC2 instance. As you see in this PPT, this PPT depicts my demo. Here, I'm going to show you the complete demo into two parts. In the first part, I'm going to show you like how you can set up the required infrastructure on Amazon EC2 instance to support self-hosted GitHub Action runners. And especially here, you know, we're going to manage this infrastructure with using you know infrastructure as a code that is using terraform and github actions right so that's the first part of our demo in the second part i'm going to show you once our you know self-hosted github action runner infrastructure is ready how to use that at a github repository you know to do the required cicd job okay sir so basically this is the you know this is the aim of you know this video basically to help you to understand how does it works and how you can you know how you can use it at your github actions okay all right, so here before I walk you through the CI CD or before I walk you through the infrastructure as a code of this infrastructure, I'm gonna explain how does it been set up. Okay, so here I have an AWS account, so this is what it represents. The, the you know the outer rectangle represents my AWS account. In that one, I will choose a AWS cloud region that is EUS2. Within that, I have a VPC that is default VPC, and in that VPC, we I will create a subnet called public subnet. By targeting to that public subnet, you know, we're gonna create an EC2 auto scaling group. So basically, why we are using EC2 auto scaling group is you know, because it provides the electricity, you know, it provides the elasticity or highly availability based on the demand. Okay, so basically, when there is a high demand, automatically this resource has a capacity to automatically you know horizontally scale up, uh, and scale down accordingly the basically basically on the need. Yeah, so that's the reason you know to use that capability, we are using auto scale group here right um then okay so once our auto scaling uh, group infrastructure is up and running fine and what we we'll do is you know we're gonna use the existing vpc being created out of it and configure it in a such a way that you know it will host the you know the the github action runners right and once you have configured that ec2 instance to to host your github action runners or, or you are you know you are leveraging that particular ec2 instance to act as a self-hosted GitHub action, right? Once that has been done, how you can consume it at the AWS side to do the required CICD job, okay? So basically, these are the, my aim of this video. Okay, so before I walk you through the code, so first of all, let me take you to the, my GitHub repo. So basically, this is my GitHub repo. In this GitHub repo, I have created a folder called GitHub Actions, uh, GitHub Runners, okay? So basically, this folder is, is, you know, is managing the required infrastructure, which I showed you in this one. Basically, that is the folder which which actually manages this infrastructure at my AWS account. Yeah, all at the same repository. I have cloned it here. I'm going to show you. So this is my repository, right? So basically, you know, if I can expand it, this is my repository. In this one, you you see the GitHub runners is there, and I have the reusable workflows. I have explained in detail like how you can you know configure and use the reusable workflow in my one of my dedicated video. Maybe you can watch it if you want to understand more about how did I do this. Yeah. All right, so basically here my aim is you know to help you how to manage your self-hosted github runner infrastructure with using terraform right and then in the other side i'm going to also show you how you can use it at the in at the real time you know doing the cacd job yeah all right so so this is the code before i walk you through this one i'm going to show you my aws account as well so basically this is my aws account right and i'm going to go to the uh this one yeah so this is currently you know usage instance i'm going to explain like how what is uh, what is all about this ec2 instance and this is my vpc uh, you know vpc resource and and currently we are in um, currently we are in london region or or eu west 2 region yeah and also other side you know i have the im rules as well i'm going to explain like what are those as well so basically these are the tabs or belongs to my aws account and i'm going to use these tabs to explain my you know demo piece by piece yeah first one Let's, I'm going to walk you through the code basically, you know, how did I set up that, this infrastructure with using, you know, Terraform, yeah. So basically, how did I configure the EC2 autoscaling group, which is meant to host the GitHub Action runners, right. So if I go to the code, so basically, all the required infrastructure is been kept under, you know, GitHub runner folder. And main file runner and TF for all files are belongs to the same release and meant for you know multi environment purpose as well. Yeah. All right. So before I walk you through this one, a quick update. Basically, 
you know i'm going to upload this info upload this file or upload this code into uh, uh, you know a particular github repo and the github repo link will be provided in my in this video's description you can find the same code from there and try at your your side as well okay so basically you know before i walk you through this one so you know let me tell you the one more important thing so to release this github runners i have created a dedicated you know reusable workflow called 04 github runners okay so i'll come to that one first one let me walk you through the complete files of github runners right so in this one first let me go to the main.tf file so in the main.tf file so basically you know i'm yeah, here I'm, I'm i'm going to configure i'm going to provide the inputs on what are all my backend of terraform state file so here i'm using app.terraform.io which is uh, which is a terraform cloud uh, you know host name and in that one i have a organization called cloud quick labs and then i have a workspace called eks terraform okay so basically this is my backend configuration which is a remote basically you know i'm not storing the my state file or i'm not executing the you know basically i'm not basically you know i'm storing my um, what i can say but basically my i'm storing the my infrastructure uh, uh, you know the uh, the state at uh, at at you know at terraform cloud and in a particular organization and particular workspace and then after that you know we are also configuring the providers that is required for the terraform that is aws provider and targeting to eu west one region so if i can go back to my aws account so this is our london region and if i go to this one so this is our london region yeah so this is about the main file yeah and then we go to the runners in the runners this is the basically you know the heart and soul of the uh, you know github runner folder this is the place where we actually define you know what are you know how do you want to provision your auto scaling group right to provision the auto scaling group so all the infrastructure is been written in the form of a terraform here first one we are getting the data because to spin up the auto scaling group you need two resources one is you know you need a launch temple template to build the launch template you need certain data right and that data are been you know are been uh, retrieved first and then we are going to create a resources first one we are getting the availability zones of a region eu west one and then we are also getting the uh, the ami ids which are required to spin up the auto scaling group and we, this is the you know this is a piece of code which tells you okay so here uh, we are using the data key and this is the aws resource and this is the variable name uh, yeah so in this one um, we are giving the uh, parameters like most recent owners basically you know we are just filtering and and, and retrieving the required you know the aws ami id yeah so that is what this job is does and then we go to the next resource here this piece of code or this resource is creates a aws launch temple launch a template i'm using this aws launch template to spin up the auto scaling group i'm going to show you that in the down the line so here this is a resource this is the aws launch template this is the variable inside this flower bracket we are giving the parameters one is the name of my launch template then this is the description of the launch template this is the ami id okay so how how are you correlating the ami id this is something like this if you see the data is coming here aws ami it's, it's also pointing here then you are using the amazon linux that is the variable and then out of that you are using the attribute id and that has been pointed to the you know image id then you have the instance id so the instance id has been fed as the parameter variables or, or as a variables of this similarly the key name as well okay i'm going to show you that how it has been passed but basically these are dynamic being, dynamically been made and we are adding the tag called something like name to this template now that is a basically you are creating a launch template we will use that launch template uh, to create auto scaling group and this is the piece of code which does that so basically this is a resource uh, and this is a resource type that is aws underscore auto scaling underscore group this is the name of the variable of this particular resource and then you are giving the parameters like name availability zone so availability zone if i go to the availability zone that is where the data is being okay so if you see here the availability zones and then and then we are using all all az's names okay and then we have a couple of other parameters like health check is easy to health check then the health check period is is parameterized i'm going to show you what is the health check period has been given desired capacity as well and minimum and maximum you know easy to instance should stay at you know at the at the both end you know when when there is a no load and when there is a uh when there is a high load basically that's what when there is a low no load which is a minimum value when there is a high load you know up to ma what maximum of the east instance can be scaled in this auto scaling group okay basically this is a horizontal scaling 
in the launch template you know we are targeting the launch template which we created above for this you know auto scaling group and the version is latest version okay so basically this is the you know the runner dot tf file now i'm going to go to the variable file which is very also it's also very important so basically you know this since you know since we are using the you know reusable workflow with multi environment uh, way of github action so that's the reason i we need to i'm here i'm creating a two environment for the variables needed for environment dev environment uit environment production will differ right and that's where you know you need you must use a variable parameter okay that is variables dot tf file so variables dot tf file is the file which actually you know uh, uh, defines uh, uh, the, the the parameter that is needed for your you know for for to run this particular infrastructure you say yeah so here the variables are instant type key names and i was explaining about health check uh, grace period as well desired capacity minimums basically these parameters okay so if i can select from top to bottom all these are been default values are been given and we are using default values i'm not providing any values how that is something you can find it in a tf work file right so basically this is the uh, uh, variable dot tf file so variable dot tf file is a file which can which helps the terraform to declare the variables right and dot tf or files is the file which actually you are you know giving the values when there is no default values have been defined in the variables so what it means you know if you are not defining here automatically terraform will use the default values so here i am doing the uh, i am defining your values for variables like instant type so here i am using t2.micro because this is a demo which is a free one but in production you need to change it in the key name so we are, i have created a key name by you know i have created a default key name called github runners and and that key name is been fed here right okay that is that is about the dev.tf or similarly uat.tf or will also um so uat.tf tf file will also contains the same thing here okay all right so that is that is all about uh, you know github runners so basically this is all about the you know the folders github runners so no worries i'm going to share this github runner folders link in this video's description you can find it from there and and use it at your you know at your uh, demo purpose now so this is about the code so now i have also declared a variable or a file called 04 github runner.yaml file okay so you see there are other couple of um, uh, you know the reusable workflows have been defined but i'm going to walk you through this 04 github runners as well in this demo why because you know this is the you know reusable workflow which actually invokes the uh, terraform files present here yeah all right so let's see how does you know how i'm invoking this reusable workflow for my you know self-hosted infrastructure yeah so this is very simple so basically you know this is a reusable workflow which is exactly like how did i explain in my previous video again i'm i'm you know i'm just uh, you know uh, uh, suggesting you to, to 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 watch my another video to help you understand how does this actually works in depth yeah if you'd like to so here basically we are using the reusable workflow with a name called uh, 04 github runners and it will be only invoked by dispatch in the sense it will not be invoked by uh, uh, by automatically but but it can you know this github action uh, you know the cicd will be invoked by manually that is what workflow dispatch tells about and in this one we have declared the certain jobs as well anyways this jobs is meant for respective environments okay so basically uh, you know this jobs includes uh, two parts you know first two parts are belongs to dev and the second two parts are belongs to uh, belongs to uat okay i'm going to walk you through the dev whereas the uat is a just mirror of the dev yeah so here what we are doing is you know we are telling that you know this plan action this is actually a terraform plan action this terraform plan action has to run whenever there is a some pushes happens on the branch feature branch okay in the sense it should only invoke when you are when you are running or when you are running or whenever you are creating basically here it will run when you are targeting your targeted branch is feature branch one okay so when you are choosing the you know dispatchable you know workflow dispatch that is you know uh, uh, basically what you know invoking the github actions with using manual and if you are pointing to the feature branch one then only this job will be running that's what it means and here i'm just pointing to the user so basically this is a, a big syntax that is a username that is a github username and this is your repository name in that one you are pointing to a file that is aws uh, you know the the plan file because i have a plan file i'm going to show you that and at where so at which branch basically the branch name is feature branch one and with configuration is also been given here so with uh, with path is this one so when you say path in the sense in this repository you have folders like like you see the eks forget 
and then you have the uh, you know the github runners okay it will point to the path github runners right similarly tfr so it is uh, when you say tfr file so basically it goes to and consumes this tfr file and environment is is dev okay and similarly the this is a csv token so what is this token is this is a tf uh, this is a terraform cloud api token which is needed for remote execution purpose right so this is terraform plan stage and this is the uh, apply stage which is actually just just it up you know just just calls a aws tf apply file yeah rest all configuration is same yeah similarly if i expand the other one so uat uh, uh, you know uat plan and uat apply will also remain same yeah now before i that you also need to know what is we are doing in the terraform plan so in the terraform plan you know we are i'm doing nothing so i'm going to walk you through this one as well basically i have gone very depth uh in the, in the another dedicated tutorial maybe you can use it so this is the file which gets called by this caller file so this is uh, zero hyphen github runner is a caller file and these two are the called files so these called files will be called one after the other first it will call plan the second it will call call the apply so basically these are the inputs are being given here so inputs will be there secrets will be there here and then basically it, it you know its job you know it is performing certain jobs that is uh i know you see uh since here you know we are we are we are releasing the you know the self hosted github runner uh, uh, you know infrastructure that's the reason we are using you know default uh, github given runners that is ubuntu latest yeah and in this one uh, we are wrapping the environmental uh, environments in the default values yeah basically the path is been given as a default and then you have certain steps underneath the job that is uh, that is to check out then the changing the file name so this are the, has its own implication i would request you to check my another video and then basically we are, we are doing this you know this is very important so it is actually performs a plan of the terraform and it will throw an error if there is a failure that's what the plan does and in the in the in a very layman time and very quick explanation the 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 body of the terraform apply or the body of the terraform apply called file will remain same except a step at the end of the step okay so there's an end step called um so if i can go down so there's an end step called terraform apply so basically this will do a terraform apply automatically with automatically upload yeah and right, this is how this is how i manage this self-hosted github action runners infrastructure with using cacd only okay so basically you are building a cacd machine with using cacd pipeline which is using the default github given you know uh, github action runners right all right so now once this infrastructure is, is been built you are making a, a github action runners ready and that can be consumed in the targeted repository okay so we see how how that can be done in the later case first let's release this one okay so what i did is um so i'm gonna i'm gonna make some nonsense changes and we're gonna invoke this one so nonsense in the sense uh, i know i'm just give us some comment okay so i will say testing right? and i can i can run this again testing so i'm gonna um, just write like testing demo so i'm going to share this uh, save this particularly and then then you know let's release the our github actions so that we provision the you know the github action runners infrastructure okay so i'm just still releasing github runner infra right so i'll just commit it off so basically i have already released it but just to help you to understand i'm going to walk you through the uh, the actual thing that happens from the github actions and, and it provisions the you know hosted github action runners right so i will go to this repository so this is the uh, uh, repository where you know where my um, github runners is been done okay so if i go to the uh, go to this one so this is the branch which actually we push the changes and that is the same folder which i walked you through right so you see the uh, the github runner folder and it contains all those terraform files and then you have the in, under the workflow files you have the reusable workflow called github runners which actually manages the uh, the github runners uh, you know self hosted github runners infrastructure now i'm going to run this again so this is the github actions list in this one we will use a reusable workflow called github runners and we're going to target it on the updated branch that is uh, a github you know future branch one click on run once it runs you see you see that you know the infrastructure is being provisioned basically doing nothing but it, it creating a template it creating a, a auto scaling group as we define and and that is that configuration is been managed with using infrastructure as a code right and that is what it happens i'm going to show you the live thing here you know what happens if you see here it is passing through these jobs okay which i explained in the terraform plan and terraform apply so basically it is running a plan now 
under the Houdino, it is executing AWS TF plan file, which we saw just a while ago. So this is the file it is executing, that is uh, TF plan here first, and then it will you know, run the AWS TF apply as well. And uh, here you go. So basically, you know, since the, my infrastructure is already provisioned, I have previously released before I started you know, recording this video. So basically, you know, it has created, uh, 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 you know, it has, you know, while it is executing, I'm going to show the logs as well. Uh, so here you have the East instance, which has been provisioned. And if I can go down, so you also have the auto scaling group. So this is the auto scaling group, which we created here, right? And the template it uses is the, is this is the template it is using. And so we are, we are managing this infra, which using this definition. If I open this auto scaling group, you see the maximum capacity, minimum capacity is one. And activity is something, you know, you can see uh, the auto scaling. So these are the configurations, instance management, right? Uh, so this is the, since we are using T2 micro, this is where you can see it here. And then you have the you know last template configurations being pointed here monitoring instance refresh everything configurations here right okay so looks like our build plan is succeeded so if i go to the plans it should show nothing because it's already been infrastructure has been released and if i can show here your infrastructure matches the configuration so there is no changes but still i'm executing so that you are aware that you know the infrastructure has been managed by terraform yeah so currently it is again running the apply you see the applying the plan and, and you know i just give in very unique name you build the plan then you apply the plan under the hood you know you are you are running the terraform plan you are running the terraform apply right so let's wait for one minute so that it can uh, you know it can complete okay okay so while it gets complete i'm going to walk you through the back to the this one so basically this is the infrastructure has been written if i go to the hosted in the ec2 dashboard so you have the same ec2 instance which is part of the auto scaling group been being shown here okay and what i did is to this ec2 instance i have attached i have attached an im rule uh, with the ec2 instance profile you know uh, trust configurations are, are basically if i can tell you so i have attached ec2 instance profile rule to this ec2 instance okay so that's the reason you see if i can go go here so this is where if i go to the um, uh, and you drag down so basically i can show you that rule so this is the my ec2 instance role which has an administration privilege but uh, with a trust relationship back to the uh, back to the ec2 services all right so let it open um so yeah so basically why did i attach this instance role is so that you know i can leverage the you know ssm agent capability to 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 take the ssh of this ec2 instance and perform the the self-hosted github action runner configurations okay and that is the aim of this one so this is my instance im role which i just opened in this one i have given you know a couple of access you see the couple of access have been given to this one it has full access it has the you know it has administrator access you know basically and in the trust relationship this is the way it defines saying like you know this role can be assumed by the uh, you know ec2 services yeah that's what the role is so once i attach this role i gave a couple of time couple of minutes okay and then you know then it, it you know then you see if i let me go back again so in this ec2 instance you know if you can click on the connect automatically you see the session manager you know starts working whenever you see this connect bar you know uh, connect uh, button gets uh, gets this button get this color that is red color then automatically it means that you know the ssm agent is working so all those configurations of my self-hosted you know self-hosted uh, github action runners configurations will be managed by the SSM session only okay so I'm not using any uh, putty based session here since this is Amazon Linux okay so since this is Amazon Linux if I can go back okay so if while while okay I think I have already explained you while we are declaring the template right so we used the AMI belongs to Amazon Linux only okay so, and, and and with the flavor like like Amazon HVM and EBS flavor kind of thing okay so the same instance will be available here and that is the one we are logged in already okay okay this is all about you know this is all about the infrastructure and let me walk you back to the again the job looks like the job has been completed and infrastructure is now the self-hosted github action runner infrastructure is now managed by cicd only right and that's the reason you see you know it is it is you see that there is no changes and it tells that you know i have i know how I, I have executed all those commands within the altar of file that is creating a, a, a know, template this is creating a template this is creating a auto scaling group and that's the reason we see the instances up in running fine here and and those uh, i know and also those uh, the launch template here 
and also you have the uh, uh, you know you also have the auto scaling group yeah so basically these are being spent up by the same this pipeline okay now now let me go back to the picture so basically we are ready with our you know github action runner infrastructure now let's that's not but still but still you know that is not enough you need to you know you need to elevate this ec2 instance to act as a github action runners okay then only it will become self hosted github runners okay so basically we need to perform certain configurations on that ec2 instance yeah so basically you know this ec2 instance is public how it is public you know because you know because my vpc if i can go to the my vpc this is the vpc which we are using or or i can show you like this okay if i go to the ec2 instance click on this one and then there is a ec vpc will be attached so if i can open this vpc this vpc is is public you know this is a vpc basically this is a default vpc it contains the subnets okay and uh, and if i go to the, so it also has the internet gateway being attached that's the reason it, this is a public ec2 instance right and if i go to this one so basically we are using the subnet ending with 39f i will go to the uh, uh, vpc called 39f so basically 39f so 39f is this is the vpc right and uh, since the you know since the internet gateway is attached to this vpc you now it becomes the reaching to the reaching to the every aws ec2 instance becomes easy in sense even though it is in aws cloud and uh, and you know this auto scaling group is is lies in a subnet where the you know icw is attached right and that's the reason it becomes a publicly accessible yeah and while while provisioning the auto scaling group you know we also provisioned a public ip address to your ec2 instance okay that's the reason it becomes very easy for uh, for the github to communicate okay so for the github which is sitting in the internet so it will communicate that via that method this is definitely this is not a very uh, uh, no, very secure one maybe in the production side you might you might need to you might need to remove this you know you might need to get out of the public ip address and and make it very private self hosted github runners yeah but this aim is to just to help you to understand yeah all right so this is all about the uh, this one that is uh, subnet and one more thing is we have a, uh, i need to tell you about the route tables in the route table we have added a routes so in the routes okay so where is the routes if i go to the routes so this is the uh, route table being being used and you see this route table is attached to the vpc basically route table and and the and the uh, icws are attached to a uh, to a vpc where where our public subnet is hosting hosted so here the routes are been added that is from internet it should go to the this particular icw in the sense if it's coming from internet then it has to hit the icw and then within the local you know it can you know within the ec2 instance you can hit to any of these ip ranges that is what it means okay and then we also have a security group you need to understand what is added in the security group as well i'll go to the security group which is attached to this uh, particular infrastructure that is if you go to the inbound so in the inbound i have just allowed all topics okay so if i can edit the inbounds you see all the roles are being allowed okay so basically this is wide open that's the reason our communication becomes very easy and make sure that you know you also have a outbound rules that is you know from the ec2 instance also you need to have a, a communication being opened okay all right that is about the vpc configurations and uh, and you know that's and, and you know that's and henceforth we have also attached i, I am role for ec2 instance and we are using the same capability okay i'm going to close it off again now let's let's come back so basically i have explained you everything about the ec2 instance configurations which is acting as a self hosted agent okay basically you know we have already completed a first part the second part you know now now i have a repository called github action odc connect okay so this github action odc connect is a independent repository than the repository which is hosting my github runner okay so basically don't get confused on one repository i am i am provisioning my self hosted github runners with using ci cd pipeline again and i have the another very secure repository say you know that's where you are building your application and you need to use only self hosted agent in that case you know this is in that case you know you need to segregate that repository and you need to configure a self hosted you know github action runners targeting to that particular repository okay now for this case i am using this github action odc repository for this demo okay so to do that you need to go to the settings click on the settings in the settings you see there is a there is a button called actions in that and go to the runners not general but go to the runners and here it will it will have a green button called new self hosted runner click on this one 
it will give you option like where you can create a self-hosted GitHub runner. Basically, you cannot create it, but you know it actually you know it actually guides you how you need to configure your infrastructure so that you can you know elevate that infrastructure to act as a self-hosted GitHub runner. Okay, and that is the reason you know it was very long walk that you know so that you are you know rightly building your infrastructure, and then you leverage or then you elevate that infrastructure to work act as a you know self-hosted GitHub runners. Right. So here. I will so since we our infrastructure is lies on here and everything is ready so SSM agent is working VPC or configurations have been working fine Eastern instances have been run, up and running fine now only one task left is you know we need to configure it to elevate it as a to elevate or to make it as a self-hosted GitHub runner you know machine yeah and that is where I'm doing now so okay so so far now there are two tabs okay one tab is is now I have I'm taking the SSM session the another tab you know i have uh, opened the uh, you know i have opened my repository where i need to use the self hosted runners in this one in the settings so i have choose the linux because my, that's my linux machine and in this one i'm choosing the architecture that is cross 64 architecture and then these are the commandlets you know you know the default github repository itself tells you hey you need to run these commands on your machine so that you know it can you can elevate that machine as a self hosted you know github runners okay and that's what we going to do now what you do is now what i do is um let's run this command okay basically you know these are the same command i'm going to walk you through this one and there is no surprise whenever you are whenever you are creating a, a github repository and you want to use the self-hosted runners there then you know basically go to the settings click on the uh, uh, click on the actions then click on the you know the create self-hosted runners click on the respective versions you will have those commands and you only have to run these commands Maybe you can wrap these commands in a .sh file and you can use it as the you know user data while provisioning the uh, auto scaling group. That is also possible. But I have not covered this one. Uh, covered in this video, maybe I will I can dedicate it another video for this one for the same thing. Yeah. For now, let's do it manually. That is make now. First of all, we need to create a folder. That is what uh, the steps tells here from the GitHub. So I'm gonna go to this one host machine. So let me uh, show the host name of this one. So basically, the host name can be checked by typing a command host name. Host name. So this is the host name, and you can check what is the present working directory. This is present working directory. Yeah. Now we're gonna create. Uh, you know, this is when you are when you when, know when you are using the SSM user based session, you cannot create any uh, folders. Uh, uh you know in, in the root directory basically this is a root one so that's the reason we need to do we need to you know we need to shift you know we need to move under another repository uh another folders that's the reason what i'm doing is i'm i'm moving under myself under a temp folder for example okay so i will go to the tmp temp folder and then from there we need to begin the uh we need to begin the you know job from there okay so basically if you try to do everything from the root folder it will not work yeah that's the reason i'm just moving into a tmp folder Right, I can I can do the present working director again. So the, currently we are in the TMP folder. Okay, so in the TMP folder we're gonna execute this command that is uh, uh, creating a folder called action runners and seeding to that uh, as well. So basically I'm gonna run those commands. So so I'm gonna run this command quickly. Right. So basically what I do is you know make the directory called action runners and seed to that action runners. Okay. So if you do the uh, uh, you know PWD. You should see, you know, so currently you have created the uh, currently you have created the folder called GitHub Action and you also did a CD to that particular folder. That's what it command does. And the next command is, you know, we gonna um, so we gonna go to the uh, next command that is download the latest runner packages. And that's command it does. So I'm just copying that command and pasting it here, right? And do the curl. So basically, you know, you are you are downloading the packages required to elevate this EC2 instance to act as a self-hosted GitHub runners, right? And it has been done you see it was 135 mb size and it got downloaded that's the second step and then the third step is you know you need to optionally validate the you know the hash so this is just a checker a command that you can run against your ec2 instance i'm going to do that again so here you go so you should see uh you know uh, the okay command okay result after this one basically this machine is good enough to elevate as a self-hosted runners right I'm gonna go to the next command that is extract the installer. Okay, so in the above command we downloaded the package. Now we need to extract the package and run those. Okay, that is what I'm doing now. So basically, you are using the tar command and an xjdev. 
and removing the file which is downloaded above and here you go if i can do the ls now you should see here so here you go right so it has extracted and this is this tar dot uh you know tar dot gz okay to tar dot you know gz uh, file is being um, um uh, been extracted yeah so and it contains a couple of uh, files and folders you see the template file you the safe sleep file and you have environment sh you have the rel for uh, helper command and run dot sh these files has its own you know uh, its own uh, importance while configuring the self-hosted uh, you know well or, or while elevating a ec2 instance to a self-hosted github runners okay and let's go to the next command so basically we are done with the the first downloading step and the next two steps are, are the configuring steps okay very simple and very straightforward and these commands are you know ready made for your respective repository okay? so you cannot reuse the same command which i'm showing you for your repository you go and and you know you go and go to the settings go to the actions and and go to your file so automatically these commands changes according to your repository for your information yeah so for belongs to the my repository i'm going to run this command that is um, now basically this is the command which actually configures everything which does the magic yeah so we're going to run this command now Here you go it has started to register your machine as a self-hosted runners right so now it is asks, asking me enter the name of the runner group to add the runner so i'm going to keep it a default one so just i'm just entering uh, just giving the enter and here it telling the runner name so okay what is that runner name that you are going to give so i'm going to give my channel name that is cloud quick labs okay so while i while the name of my channel came so i can request in between please do subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot and also they you know i also provide a couple of services like uh, through the my channel membership you can look at through, through that as well and also i do provide a you know explicit uh, uh, explicit uh, uh, freelancing services also been provided by me maybe you can reach out to my video channel descriptions uh, and, and you know you can reach out me through my emails uh, in regards to that as well yeah all right so basically that's a quick update so now let's get back to the steps so here enter the name of the runner so i'm giving my runner name as cloud quick labs and here it is telling me this runner will be using the following tags okay and enter any additional tags if you any any uh, basic labels is nothing but tags okay it just adds the tags which can be used in the github runners you know in the in the github actions so that you point to that particular you know github runners yeah so that's the reason what i do is you know i will tell it as a, a demo uh, um, just tell demo you know just tell like a cloud demo um just tell like demo yeah demo so i'm just adding one extra label called demo and we will use that yeah all right so github runners are successfully added and here you go you see the enter the uh, workflow number i just keep it default so i'm just keep everything default so basically once you once you have already passed through these configurations which eventually means that you know you have already you know you have already elevated your machine as a um you have already elevated this machine as a uh, you know github runners now let's go to the uh, uh, let's go to the uh, this one so basically we are done with this one there is a one more command that is run.sh which we can do it later that is last step is run it in the sense this when you do a run.sh basically what it does you know you can you can streamline you know you can just uh, you know make the make the application up and running fine yeah so now i think by by this one you, if you go to the github actions and you should see that machine has been reporting now and here you go right so the machine is automatically started to repo and the tag is something but if you see the status is offline okay to make the status online we need to run run.sh file which i was talking about all right so i will go back again and and then we can we can do the uh, ls again and we have a file called run.sh so let's run this file that is run.sh so basically run.sh is what it actually does is all right run.sh so run.sh file so basically what i'm doing is i'm running a run.sh file so till now you have made this machine to act as a self-hosted github runner but still the application is in you know dormant stage or in a in a stale state to make this application running you need to run this command this is a customization but at the real time you know you can also make this file running forever with using certain techniques okay all right so i will keep that these techniques you know for the for the next video maybe you need to wait for that video and then i can do that for you yeah for now this is just to help you or to get started with how you can host a self-hosted github action runners on aws yeah all right so basically i'm gonna run this command now so what it actually does is you know it will it will start it will start the job and it will wait for any job being invoked okay okay all right so we are done now uh, so now 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 time has been come to use that yeah 
So basically, I'm going to switch to this GitHub repository. So I will just close it off. So now what we do is now our infrastructure is ready now. Now time has come up. Okay, so basically, till now we are done with the you know spinning the infrastructure, elevating that infrastructure to act as a GitHub runner, you know GitHub action self-hosted runners, right? And now we want to use that into the targeted repository. So how to do that? That's the next step I'm going to show now. So again, I'm again going back and and I'm going to the switch to the repository where the uh, where the you know self-hosted runners have been targeted. Yeah, so they are been targeted to this repository. And basically, this repository is you know what actually you know, this is the same repository which I have explained in my GitHub Action OIDC Connect video. So basically, you can watch this video to explain or to understand more about like how you can use the OIDC Connect to get you know, to get access to the AWS and do the CI/CD job with using that access. Okay. So basically, this is what it does. So I'm going to walk you through this, uh, you know, uh, uh, GitHub Action uh, file. And in this file, you know, we're going to use the, we're going to use the, uh, our, basically, you know, our uh, just now created self-hosted runner. So if I go to the, my repository and go to the GitHub Actions, go to the runners. Okay, so this, in this runner, you have the Cloud Quick Lab runners has been, you know, idle. And in this one, we need to use the tag. So basically, you can invoke with using um, either of the tags. So basically, I will now need to switch to demos. Just, just I'm just. If you see, I'm I'm telling. So here, this is what it makes sense. So if you are a, a GitHub guy who understand the workflows, then you will understand. Okay. So till now, we used to use the Ubuntu latest, blah blah, which is being given by the you know GitHub. But now, I'm using the you know Git self-hosted GitHub runners, which is hosted on the AWS. How I'm doing? I'm doing by referring run on demo. And how did I find that I need to use that by going to the runners and there are the tags you can use either of the one it will use the same one okay it will it will try to you know, it will try to invoke the same machine to do the required CICD job yeah all right so let me quickly walk you through this one as well so this is a github action file so in this file it, will, it gets invoked on push the reason is us west 2 and permission is read write has been given so basically this is a file which actually you know mimics the how to use the OIDC connect at AWS to do the CI/CD job. Here, you know, two things. Here is a very, very crucial one. Here, you know, you are using OIC, OIDC as well, and you are also using the self-hosted GitHub runners. Okay, basically, very secure way of doing the CI/CD at GitHub Actions, right? And that's where I'm doing it here. So basically, in the in this job, so this is a demo OIDC job. In this one, you are running it this job on the demo that is on the self-hosted runners. The stuff says, you know, just close the repository. It gets the AWS configurations uh, credentials, which has been tagged to this role called OIDC role. Uh, and, and then this is the reason. And then, you know, basically it is doing one job called, you know, getting the parameter and just printing the parameter. So what I'm doing is I'm running a command called AWS CLI command. That is AWS SSM get parameter. This is the parameter. Yes, this parameter is already exists. So maybe I can show you this parameter. If I can go back to this one. So if I go to the, uh, maybe I need to switch from here. So basically duplicate this one. And I go to the SSM. In the system manager, I have created a parameter and that parameter is being retrieved in this, um, in this self-hosted GitHub Action Runners uh, demo, right? So, so in the parameter, so I have already created this one. So you see, this is the parameter being created. It has a value called Cloud Quick Labs. And that's what, you know, that's what it happens. So that is what, in the sense, we are getting that parameter with using CI/CD, with using a command called AWS get parameter, right? And it will just print a value. And then finally, you know, we are just we are just you know using the uh, we are just running the command called AWS SDS get caller. So basically, these are the steps just to help you to understand that you know, yes, now the GitHub Action runner is working and which is hosted on a self-hosted runners, and it also doing the required CI/CD job. Okay, that is what it mimics basically. Yeah. All right, so now I pointed the this runner to work. I mean, I pointed this workflow to run on self-hosted GitHub Action Runners. Let's go and see how does it works. Right, that's the final step of this demo. So I'm gonna save this off um, and just push it off. Right. So basically, this uh, this action gets automatically invoked. If I go to this one, so this invocation will happen at once. I once I push it, yeah. And it has only one branch, main branch. Okay, so if I go to this uh, repository now, we should see the actions being invoked. Don't get confused. So currently, I'm GitHub Action OIDC Connect, and the uh, you know it has automatically invoked, right? And you see, it has started to do this job. Okay, so you see, it has you know it has successfully started. 
and we can also see the streaming here if you see here right so the listening for the jobs it has identified that you know it has running the job called demo oidc job demo oidc has been completed looks like you know our machine is is responding to the you know respond to the cicd jobs and it is performing the required csd job yeah and that's what we can see it here here you go right so it has done all the steps of the job that is setting the job cloning the repository right so it is actually cloning the repository if you can see here so you can you can also see this uh, you know repository as well from here basically this is what it does it's also configuring the credentials with using the odc connect and you know it's also running a command that is get ssm parameter and indeed it has retrieved the parameter value that is cloud quick labs if i go to the ssm so this is what the value has been returned yeah all right and then in the print assume rules so we are running a command called sts get caller identity and that has also returned and that's also basically basically you know we have successfully shown you that and you know, how you can configure how you can host manage configure the self-hosted github action runners on amazon ac2 instance especially with using you know ec2 auto scaling group and and managing this infrastructure with using you know see i know with using infrastructure as a code using terraform terraform cloud as well yeah all right so i have successfully shown you the things to be shown in this demo from scratch to end yeah all right finally a kind request please do subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot so with that note thank you thanks a lot and see you in the next video